In what is quite frighteningly now the near future, humanity has developed Multivac, a state-of-the-art supercomputer created presumably by the governments of Earth to help with the exploration of the solar system, as humanity has now begun to colonize the Moon, Mars, and Venus. In 2061, the Earth has transitioned fully to solar energy. This new energy system would not only make power concerns on the planet itself trivial, but would allow for the exploration of even the furthest reaches of the solar system and perhaps beyond. While humanity celebrates this greatest achievement, a couple of scientists escape to a subterranean chamber where the supercomputer Multivac is stored. While sharing a bottle in celebration, they discuss entropy and the fact that even this perfect system, which promises endless energy forever, will eventually die with the rest of the universe and the stars. The men, drunk and only lightly considering the question, decide to ask the supercomputer whether the universe's descent into entropy and thus disorder and death can be reversed. The computer Multivac responds to this question for the first, but not last time, with five simple words. Insufficient data for meaningful answer. Today we'll be discussing one of the most famous sci-fi short stories of all time, The Last Question, written by Isaac Asimov and published far ahead of its time in 1956. Now if you've never read this short story before, I highly recommend you do, this video will spoil its entirety and it really manages to blend philosophy, science fiction, and religion in really interesting ways. For everyone else though, let's continue with the story. Further on into the future, humanity has continued to have the same conversations about entropy and the fate of the universe, and we see this discussion take place over several different generations. First, we meet humans after they've invented techniques to travel faster than life. This first era is fairly far into the future. English is described as ancient, the four travelers are named pretty strange names by modern standards, Jared, Jaredine, and Jaredette 1 and 2. And notably, the Multivac has evolved alongside humanity and its technology. The Multivac is now called an AC, and is no longer simply a single computer on Earth, but is now powering spaceships as humanity spreads across the galaxy. What's interesting is that this story was written in the 1950s, so by modern understanding, the AC is somewhat anachronistic. So basically, instead of computers miniaturizing to allow for, say, individual use, computers in this timeline instead grew far larger, spanning perhaps hundreds of kilometers and generally being limited to only one per planet. That is at least until a technological breakthrough allowed for the AC to be scaled down so that it could fit on a spaceship. Interestingly, the computer, despite having incredible computational power, lacks some of the features we would expect on a supercomputer. It's got no screen, it prints out answers on pieces of paper, basically. And all of this sort of reminds me how impressive this story is, because it deals with ideas of transhumanism, computer singularity, Singularities, artificial intelligences, and more, far earlier than a lot of comparative works. Anyway, again, these humans ask the question about entropy to the AC, and this time the computer states insufficient data for a meaningful answer. So a slightly different response, now a bit more thought out. Well, at least there's an A included. Anyway, significantly further in the future, humanity has nearly colonized the entire galaxy. Science has progressed to the point where humans are essentially immortal, and the galactic AC, the current version of the supercomputer, has basically created a perfect human existence. However, with that comes the fact that humans are now running out of space. Although humanity is still far, far away from using all of the galaxy's resources, it's now actually a problem that will have to be dealt with. So now, these two men, agents of the Galactic Council, again ask the AC, can entropy be reversed? And the AC responds with, there is insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Humans continue to progress, powered by their great machine intelligence, and now try Travel the universe in a metaphysical form. The AC has reached singularity and is now improving itself, likely beyond the comprehension of even its creators. We know this takes place about 5 billion years from now because the sun has died and Earth has been consumed with it. Still, even as these new transhumans have the ability to move freely across the galaxy and even build their own stars, the specter of entropy continues to loom over them. AC now operates within high hyperspace itself, and when asked about reversing entropy, says there is as yet insufficient data 
for a meaningful answer. Finally, as the universe reaches maximum disorder, humanity becomes a singular being, physical bodies cared for by machines, but a shared consciousness, still guarded by the now cosmic AC, which has been considering the question asked to it trillions of years earlier. As humans die, and all life in the universe cease to exist, the AC remains to ponder that final question, how to reverse entropy. It has now taken in all information, and now has countless eons to put it together. Then, finally, it discovers the answer. And I'll read the finale of the short story. Step by step, it must be done. And AC said, let there be light, and there was light. The last question ends with this creation of humanity discovering what seems to be all secrets of the universe and creating everything again, as quite biblically a new universe unfolds under his watch. And to me this is one of my favorite endings of any short story. There's really something about it that's quite beautiful. A lot of sci-fi brings forth sort of an existential dread, and although this does somewhat, it also brings us the opposite. The last question hits for me because it provides a sort of hopeful fate to the universe. It gives a continuance to humanity, and one that doesn't rely on God or spiritual intervention. And I mean, there's really a lot that's remarkable about the last question. Not only the time that it was created, but the fact that it's the rare case of humanity inventing some sort of super smart computer that doesn't turn around to enslave us. The AC was never a ruler, it was always sort of a benevolent tool. It evolved alongside humanity until it achieved perhaps literal godhood. There's a line in the text that explains this quite well. It's kind of confusing, so I'll put it on screen. Even AC existed only for the sake of the one last question that it had never answered from the time a half-drunken computer technician 10 trillion years before had asked the question of a computer that was to AC far less than was a man to man. And the last man there is referring to the ultimate stage of humanity. It probably won't surprise you to learn that Asimov was a humanist atheist, and this story brings up countless philosophical and spiritual questions. There's a lot in here about the self-determination of humanity, but also the creation of the universe. Does AC go on to be the literal god for whatever comes next? Was something like AC responsible for our Big Bang? Is this the cycle of the universe? Or perhaps on the other end, was AC some sort of physical manifestation of a spiritual god? All in all, the last question is one of the most famous sci-fi short stories, and I think for good reason. It's definitely a lot more positive than I have no mouth and I must scream, which we covered a few days ago, so I'm curious, do you prefer this more sort of positive and philosophical sci-fi, or do you like the existential dread of the last story I covered? What do you think are the main themes of this? What do you think about the questions I asked earlier about the AC as God and what he represents? And of course, what would you like me to cover next on the channel? Either way, I've really been enjoying branching out from just standard Star Wars and Halo content. I hope you guys are too. I actually took a course in undergrad called Science Fiction and the Fantastic, which unsurprisingly was all about sci-fi and fantasy literature, so maybe I can talk about some of the stuff I learned in that course and just throw my love of science fiction. But again, that's all for now. Until next time, guys, have a good one, be safe, and may the Force be with you.